There are, for all of us, dreams on one side and nightmares on the other. We hope for one and dread the other. Friba Rezai has lived both. Her original judo training wasn't in this dojo in Vancouver. It was a world away in Kabul, Afghanistan. The goal she set for herself as a young girl was to reach the top, and she did. Rezai was one of Afghanistan's first female Olympians, competing in the 2004 Games in Athens. It's a memory that is today bittersweet. Yes, I was the first one, but I don't want to be the last one. Rezai lived her dream, but the other side of that is the nightmare she's living now. Watching what's going on in Afghanistan today. When the Taliban rolled back into Kabul, Rezaei called her family. She can't shake the conversation she had with her young niece about what could be coming. The first thing that my niece asked me is, Aunt Friba, is Taliban going to kill us when they capture us? Are they going to kill me because I'm a girl and I went to school? Those are the conversations that I had with my family members as well as my other contacts. And how do you deal with that? What do you say? What do you do? That niece's generation didn't grow up under the Taliban's control. Instead, it knew freedoms. It's a generation of women that went to school, worked, played, and never lived hidden under a burqa. The question is, how will that generation survive if the Taliban takes all of it away? From Canada, Rezaei runs a group helping and training young Afghan women. She was able to get a few out before the evacuation operation was shut down, but dozens more she works with didn't make it. Hello. Hi. Aisha is one of them. It's not her real name, we're protecting her identity. We spoke to her from Afghanistan where she's in hiding with Rezaei acting as interpreter. Aisha is an athlete, or she was. The Taliban doesn't allow women in sports. What is life like right now for you? Can you imagine a life where that doesn't change? The first time the Taliban controlled Afghanistan, it turned the country into what some have called an open-air prison. From 1996 to 2001, the group's extreme interpretation of Sharia law banned women from public life. They weren't to be seen or heard. Even their shoes weren't allowed to make noise. There was no education, no social life, no employment. I wish it was just a nightmare. Shukriya Barakzai lived through what she calls that first Taliban darkness and knew she had to escape the second. When the Taliban was out of power, Barakzai was part of the Afghan government. She was a member of parliament and later an ambassador Barakzai was also a prominent Taliban critic and women's rights activist. It made her a target for years. In one attack in 2014, her convoy was hit by a suicide bomber. 30 people were injured, three were killed. When Taliban fighters rolled back into Kabul in August, Barakzai called every contact she had, desperate to get to the airport and onto a plane. She wasn't alone. The chaos and fear was so much for some, they held on to planes on takeoff and fell to their death. Barakzai was on the run. These were images she took trying to stay ahead of the Taliban as it hunted her. She did get out. Barakzai is now in London. But for the women still stuck in Afghanistan, she says the darkness is back. Why we should pay the price for the uneducated group for uncivilized group that they are ruling Afghanistan. 
We not select them. We didn't choose them. We didn't vote for them. Now, what will Taliban 2.0 look like? Among the first things it did was ban girls from school after grade six, order women who work to stay home. Women again have to cover themselves in public and they can only leave their homes with a male relative as an escort. Its leaders have promised a more moderate government this time around. But the brutality is back, including the public beatings and executions even hanging bodies, displaying them, supposedly as a deterrent to remind people not to break their laws. Fear is a tool and it's being ratcheted up. Taliban officials say they're bringing back amputations, the cutting off of hands and feet for committing a crime. They are exactly with the same mindset. There's no big difference between Taliban at that time and this time. I don't know why people are asking, oh, we should give them time, we should give them time. It's more than a month. We should give them time till they destroy everything and kill everyone. In the first weeks, women took to the streets in protests, putting their lives on the line to push for freedoms. The Taliban pushed back, at first with violence. Journalists were beaten, covering marches. Then the Taliban banned protests it didn't approve first. In the days since, some women who took part have been hunted down. Aisha says one of her neighbors protested and was found by the Taliban and punished. I heard so many horrible things about it. To protect her identity, we're calling this woman Lida. Because of the job she had, the Taliban is trying to find her. She's trying to avoid being tortured or disappearing. They take them away. Even I heard many people are just lost and they don't know, their family don't know that where they are. If they are alive, if they're not. Now, the Taliban has promised amnesty to its former opponents, soldiers, police officers, government officials. It is already breaking that promise in brutal ways. Whether it's been stopping people at checkpoints or going door to door, they are looking for people and some are turning up dead. At the beginning, they said that we forgive everyone, but now we are seeing how they forgive because that is only a word. How someone can trust him? Whatever they are saying, it is all fake. The world ignored the Taliban's first reign over Afghanistan. It controlled the country with terror and held an iron grip over every part of a woman's life. But until it affected the West on 9-11, it was left alone. Ignoring the plight of Afghans this time will be harder. This is new Afghanistan. Barak Zai says the people of her country have changed. And the main reason is something coalition forces did help give the country, education. 10 times more children were in school this year than in 2001. 20 years ago, fewer than 1% of elementary school students were girls. This year, they were 40%. There is a new generation that has now known freedoms that in the 90s were only a dream, and they don't want to go back. They want peace. They want dignity. They want to be counted as a human. Barak Zai calls the period between Taliban reigns the blossoming. Women became police officers, pilots, politicians, judges. Lita was a photographer. She traveled the country. It was dangerous. Civilians were often caught in the middle of the conflict. At least 70,000 were killed. Afghanistan, Lita says, was far from perfect, but it was better. Even in the past 20 years, we didn't have a dream life even at that time. But still we survived, still we were happy. People in this country, we not deserve such a kind of life, honestly. We, nobody deserves such a kind of life. There is strong criticism of Canada and the NATO country's involvement in Afghanistan. Rivers of money flowed into the country for years, but too often it didn't reach the people it was supposed to help and while there was progress in cities, there was almost none in rural areas. 
There's also criticism of the pullout, how it was executed, how after 20 years, it left many with a feeling they'd been promised a brighter future, even set up for one, and then cast aside. The challenge now is to harness and hold on to what's left of the legacy of NATO's involvement. That new generation that grew up going to school knowing freedom is different than the one in the 90s and will be harder for the Taliban to control. My message to Afghan women right now is to stay strong. In the last two decades, Afghan women had so much achievements, so much gains, which we hold very, very precious to us. We are not going to let go of them easily. New technology will help. In the 90s, there were underground schools to educate girls. Now, instead of in person, some of that's already being done online. Lita works on her English with a teacher in Calgary. Right now, it's one of the only things she can do. The only job that I have is sitting at home and crying for all the things which I lost. Not only me, all Afghan women, all Afghan people. The Taliban's return has meant a new period of darkness. It's made seeing the light holding on to hope more and more difficult. The dream of a better future is still there, but so is the other side, the sort of dream where you simply wish you could wake up.